Hello guys, my name is Paddington Musque and I'm here with my partner Kudzanai. Welcome to Digital Times. Hello good people, we are here as promised. This is our first feature of our Digital Times. So Paddy, what are we going to, talk, to be talking about today? Today, we are going to be talking about small businesses, startups, and a whole lot of compliance issues that these businesses face. I think for a start, Kudzi, maybe you can take us through uh, the tax issues that, uh, that small businesses and startups face. We know SARS tax compliance is the biggest elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. For each and every small business, we struggle, we fear what SARS is going to come to us and mm -hmm. all those things, right? But what does SARS see business as? What is small business? What are small business? Those are some of the questions that we're trying to dis demystify here. Mm -hmm. SARS, from SARS perspective, SARS tax um, businesses into three categories. Okay. One, it's a micro business. Mm -hmm. Second, they have what we call small and medium businesses. Okay. The ones that we call SMEs, yes. right? Then we obviously have our large corporations and going forward, right? Mm -hmm. For small businesses or micro businesses, should I say, SARS has gone a long way in simplifying their tax issues, mm -hmm. right? They've created this thing called a turnover tax, mm -hmm. right? Where if you are a small business, you have turnover from zero to 350,000. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You do not have to pay any tax. Oh, really? Right. From 350 to 1 million, it varies from 2% to 3%. How many of you people knew that? Exactly. So those are the, some of the issues that when you have a business, you're thinking, oh, there's a, I mean, a big tax burden that is falling to, on my plate. But again, for small and medium business, it's not always that you pay 28%. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I mean, they have also a sliding scale from zero to, I mean, 20, 20 million, I mean, um, your, 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 your revenue, mm -hmm. right? You fall into that category. So with revenue from zero to 20 million, mm -hmm. you have a sliding scale. It's exactly. not automatically 28%. 100%. It's not 28% automatically. Really? Right. Then, obviously, you have your large corporations. Mm -hmm. Your large mm -hmm. co corporations pay tax now at 27% because, I mean, the 28% was just revised by the Minister of Finance in his budget sp uh, speech recently. So those are the things that people do not know. They just think, oh, you have reg registered a company today, you're looking for a VAT number. It's not as such. Mm -hmm. mm. So this turnover tax means it takes away all the tax burdens of, um, of small businesses and startups within the region of zero to one million. 100%. You, have, you don't have to comply with any taxes except for one tax, which is turnover tax. Yeah. You know, speaking of, uh, speaking of tax uh, kind of brings me to the next point that I wanted to point out to the viewers. You know, with, um, with, with startups and small businesses, one of the key issues that they face um, is a lack of foundational knowledge, the I fundamental agree. knowledge of accounting. I agree 100%. When you are doing a business, the language of business is accounting. Numbers. How are you ever going to get through business mm. if you don't understand the language of business? Mm -hmm. You need to understand mm -hmm. the numbers. You need, to, you need to be able to have at least, mm -hmm. just at least a bit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can, you can succeed in business without a bit of knowledge mm -hmm. of accounting. And I think that's one of the key issues mm -hmm. that our small businesses, our startups are missing. Exactly. They have the concept of how to make the money. Mm -hmm. They have the concept of how to operate and, mm -hmm. and, and, and do things that actually uh, uh, end them a profit. Mm -hmm. But do they know how to interpret certain things within a business? You need to speak the business of uh, the language of business, which is accounting. I certainly agree with you. I mean, I'm, at, I'm also at fault with that. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, you live in a fast-paced world. Mm -hmm. Things come, things go right in the middle and thick of things, right? Then you live with all that in your head and you forget to relay all that information to either budgets, to either expenditure and income, simple management accounts like your expenses and your income for the month. <laughs> Those are the numbers that you have, you have to, I mean, speak Very to. True. Very Don't true. Don't live in your head like most entrepreneurs do. I'm also guilty of that. You think of something, you do it there, you don't record the transaction. Okay. But that is a huge pitfall for small businesses because you need to keep record of all your, of all your transactions. 
This helps you when you want to compile your financial statements, which, which are things that, that you need to in order to comply with whether tax laws mm -hmm. or, 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 or the company intellectual property um, um, uh, laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. You really need to have those numbers in place. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you keep your things in your head, this is never going to, it's never going to work. So I think that's another thing that we have, uh, the, 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 that's a problem with small businesses, the mm -hmm. lack of record keeping. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've noticed also that outside of record, uh, of, of that lack of record keeping, mm -hmm. they also mix personal transactions with, uh, with, with business mm -hmm. transactions. 100%. And this is a, a, a huge issue with many small businesses. Mm -hmm. I've had instances where you find a business owner comes to you and says, mm -hmm. look, I've been doing A, B, C, D. Mm. I need you to compile my financial statements for tax purposes. Mm. But you see, running through the bank statements, mm. there's groceries from pick and pay and checkers. And, and you know, really, these are personal expenses. Yeah. And that's a huge pitfall because to really unbundle that mm -hmm. and come up with a set of financial statements that mm -hmm. will be uh, 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 allow, that, that, that will be acceptable to SARS mm -hmm. becomes a huge problem. Because 100%. remember, you cannot, uh, you cannot deduct your personal expenses on the company. Exactly. No, 100%. I, I, I tend to, to agree with you, I mean, on that point. Um, speaking of uh, the classification of transactions, yes, you spoke about personal and business mixing the two. But there's this also really big problem that I've seen with uh, be it small and medium, I mean, organizations where they do not have a full-fledged financial system or a CFO or a financial personnel, they mix capital assets and expend them in the business, either expenses, they capitalize them. So how do you then, I mean, probably get to a point where you want to your accounting system to run and how much or is it that expensive to be, I mean, in that, in that space? You know, I, I think it's really fair um, uh, for you to ask that question because I, I, I've seen that a lot of small businesses actually have this belief that it's expensive mm -hmm. to get accounting services. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you were to get onto a, a, an accounting package because you need a system mm -hmm. to run your transactions, to run your, 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 your business on. Mm -hmm. If you don't run your business on a, on, on a system, mm -hmm. then you, chances are your, 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 your transactions are going to be mixed up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for as little as 300 rand a month, you can, you can run on a platform. All you need is training wow. on how to run on that platform. Did you hear that? Less than 300 rand, you can have yeah. an accounting system. Yeah, you can use Sage One. Exactly. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> so, less than 300 rand, small businesses can have a platform where, they, where, 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 they, where, where all their finances run through. Mm. A system that can keep their records mm -hmm. and ensure that everything is smooth. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need the uh, the services of an expert, a financial expert, mm -hmm. then it might go up because they would be doing all the background running of the system, mm -hmm. invoicing, and 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 everything that goes into bookkeeping. Yeah. It, it might cost you anywhere within the region of two thousand plus or minus, depending on how how big the organization wow. is, depending on the revenue structure of the wow. organization. And as you can see, mm. many small business will fail. In, uh, will fail in that regard because they don't realize that look it's not that expensive mm. they probably have some expenses sitting on there in their business which are not necessary which are not very important mm -hmm. which are way more than the 2000 that we are talking about so exactly. i think it's also a, a, a mindset mm -hmm. that uh, needs to shift within small businesses and startups and and, and those small entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to understand that accounting is mm -hmm. really an important part of their compliance mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. once you have your books in order mm -hmm. all the other compliance issues fall, uh, 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 fall, fall right in place exactly. and remember compliance is not only to do with accounting there's also compliance that goes on in in the particular business space mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you, you if, if you are in security you probably have to register with some mm -hmm. security board or you mm -hmm. know things like that that you have to comply with mm -hmm. but you know those are things that you find that most entrepreneurs are mm -hmm. aware of mm -hmm. because it's within their space yeah. You cannot have an engineer doing farming. He's an engineer. Exactly. He knows the, the laws around engineering and they're probably complying with all, the, all those operational laws. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to accounting, mm -hmm. they're not accountants, mm -hmm. but their business needs accounting. 
And oh. that's where they fall short because mm -hmm. they fail to comply with accounting uh, mm. issues, uh, company registration issues, tax mm. issues. Mm. It's not their space. Exactly. We do understand, mm -hmm. but you need to get a professional on board. Exactly. Speaking, speaking of that, uh, Paddy, um, as a small business, your really big focus must be on the growth of your business. Yes. Do not and never let accounting issues and all that other issues play a significant role in terms of your, I mean, um, the bulk of your, of, of your time, of your day, mm -hmm. right? Your bulk of the time, you must focus on your business growth. Agreed. What ticks in your business? What mm -hmm. makes your business tick? Mm -hmm. Those are the trends that you must be following and leave for such, I mean, small amount of money. You can leave this thing to accountants to do it for you. Exactly. Right. exactly. I was being, I mean, when the COVID pandemic, just one example, when the COVID pandemic, I mean, started, I think it was on, th on the 27th of, of March, after um, two weeks or so. You mean the lockdown? The lockdown, yes. right, yeah, the lockdown. Um, after two weeks or so, I think the president came as well. They said they wanted to assist small businesses. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm telling you, that was probably the first time most small entrepreneurs thought that financial statements and record keeping in their business was important. I remember. Because guess what? For you to get an assistance or the assistance, they needed records mm, in your, mm, in mm. your business. Mm. But what then happened? You would find yourself with only what bank statement that you were nothing swiping else. off your expenses and nothing else. <laughs> Do you see then the space and the cost that then comes with it. I, 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 I know, I know. And there was also insurance involved. It wasn't only the government. Exactly. Many small businesses failed to claim on their insurance mm -hmm. because they did not have the records. Exactly. Yet they were paying insurance on a monthly. Exactly. And so all this money has gone to waste. Exactly. You've lost an opportunity mm -hmm. and now you are stuck. Mm -hmm. All because you don't keep your records right. Exactly. It is very important that as a small business, you, you keep, keep your records, mm. you do your accounting. Mm. If you cannot do it yourself, mm. concentrate on what you know best. Exactly. Leave it to the pros. Exactly. But if you do want to do it, go and learn. Exactly. Get the fundamental knowledge. 100%. That's the language of business. Exactly. You need to understand. Exactly. Okay, so quickly, I think we're almost, we're almost out of time. Mm -hmm. I just want you to also probably um, give a bit of information with regards to issues to do with audits. Uh -huh. and um, a preparation of financial statements mm -hmm. and reviews. I know there's a lot of issues around that. You mm -hmm. find that small businesses are looking for auditors, are mm -hmm. looking for accountants to help mm -hmm. them with their financials. How does it work? Who needs to be audited? Mm -hmm. Who needs to only be reviewed? Okay. How does all that, uh, how, how does it work in that space? I, I, I'm sure if there are small businesses and startups watching, they would want to know whether they should be audited, mm -hmm. whether they should be reviewed, or mm -hmm. probably they just need a compilation of their financial statements. No, 100%. I would agree with you, but that's another very important uh, uh, area that we must re really, I mean, touch on. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of uh, financial statements, we're just speaking now about uh, the record keeping. Mm -hmm. Remember, at the end, when you have recorded your transaction within your business, you go then prepare what we call financial statements. Mm -hmm. Financial statements are not only, only for external stakeholders. But even for yourself to just look how my, has my business performed in this past financial year, you need to know that either at a monthly basis using the management accounts. Mm -hmm. But obviously going externally, CIPC, I mean, requires you to submit your annual return. I think it's a 150 or 100, I mean, 100 CIPC, mm -hmm. depending on obviously I think it's on 150 the, now. Ex exactly, depending on obviously on your turnover of the business, mm -hmm. right? Those are the kind of things that you have to have financial statements prepared that you submit to um, be it CIPC or when you do your returns at, at SARS. But coming to the, to the, to the I mean, point that you have spoken about, audits, and I get really disturbed. It, it's like the public opinion I mean, thinks that each and every company must be audited. Mm -hmm. And we, f as entrepreneurs as well, we fall into that sort of I mean, uh, space, mm -hmm. right, or trap, should I say, mm -hmm. to just think you need to be audited, yes. right? By law, not every company should and must be audited. Did you hear that? Right. Not every company. What determines how a company is audited or should be or should not be audited is what we call PI score. Mm -hmm. This is a public interest score. Yes. Right. So 
the government and I mean society and stakeholders engaged and came up with this. I mean, where they said people that should be audited, that these are the people that impact on the public interest, mm -hmm. right? It's a score that I mean, obviously, I mean, take lots of variables. Your the number of your employees, your turnover, and all those yes, kind of yes, things. Yes. If you're less than 350 on that scoring, you do not need a, an audit, really? but just a review, just a compilation of your financial statements, mm -hmm. you're you okay. But obviously, if you're a large corporation, there is a, a relationship between those that manage the business and the shareholder, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where the shareholder would go, obviously, want the, an external opinion on what those that are charged with the governance of the company have done in this financial year. So basically what you're saying, Kudzi, is to say that when it comes to audits, mm -hmm. you need to have a, a, a public interest score exactly. that's higher than uh, 350 for you to, to require an audit. Correct. And basically the principle or the mm -hmm. concept being that you affect the public. Exactly. You, 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 your, 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 the level of operation, the mm -hmm. number of employees, mm -hmm. your turnover. Exactly. If anything is not right within your company, mm -hmm. it may affect a lot of people. Exactly. And by virtue of that, you are supposed to be audited. 100%. So for our startups and small businesses, mm which I'm sure should not be above 350, mm -hmm. they don't need an audit. Just a simple compilation and a review. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many of, of the small companies watching us now were, were looking for audits. Yeah, but if exactly. you were looking for an audit, mm. don't look anymore. You don't need an audit if you're a startup or a small business. Mm.